What's up, all James here from Party Time Brewing. Today is the first Thursday in August, which means it's National IPA Day. Let's have a drink. IPAs are good. This one's actually a New England IPA. Anyway, today's video is an unboxing, assembly, and quick test of the Malt Muncher 3 Three Roller Grain Mill. Uh, if you like what you see, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed already, give it a subscribe. Let's have at it. Party time, party time, party time brews. This song ain't no good, but we got nothing to lose. Party time, party time, party time brews. Here's another brewing clip. You can watch it if you choose. So the first thing you'll notice here is that I didn't give this man a chance to talk. We've proven time and time again that he really doesn't deserve it with all those ahs and awkward pauses. He's really going to have to prove himself somehow in a future video in order to regain the privilege. But back to the unboxing. Another Kegland product. I am by no means sponsored or receive goods from them, but they just seem to have a good hold on the cost-effective brewing equipment. Inside the box you'll see me take out a few panels for the grain hopper. One of two tiny panels which direct the grain over the rollers. Plastic. Cardboard. The box with the actual mill inside. The rubber mill hopper edge safety bumper. The roller frame with two rollers already attached. Another roller. A spinny handle thing. A bag of screws. And the same roller I put back in the box and decided to take out again. And now to the assembly. It's somewhat straightforward. We'll begin with putting the roller onto the base. Nothing holds the base together at this point, so it's a bit of a balancing act to get the rollers pushed into the holes. Removing the blue protective wrap sucks. I fought to remove the wrap from the hopper. It ripped into a few pieces and I had a hard time smoothly removing the covering. After the first one I realized that it would be a lot easier to do if it was warmed up a bit. I used a heat gun. Don't be afraid to heat it up quite a lot. I found that if it wasn't heated up enough it would leave a little streak on the metal. After filling with this protective wrap fun for about an hour I was finally done and it was time to continue on with the assembly. So the instructions were slightly on the non-existent side. I just dove in a bit without checking YouTube or the interweb. I sized up the panels for a few minutes, then had to make a few decisions. Looking at the panels, I decided to go with putting the rectangular sides on the outside. This put the seam on the inside towards the center and might help channel the grain towards the middle of the mill. Who knows? And instead of making you sit through the original attempt at putting the mill together, I went and re-recorded it four months later. Let's have a peek. The best thing you can do right now is to lay it out on a table. It takes a few minutes to prep, but it will make assembly a lot easier. You'll need all the parts, plus four screws for attaching the base, which we'll talk about later. The tools needed are a Phillips screwdriver, a 7mm socketer wrench, and a 10mm socketer wrench. Here's all the parts in a bit more organized fashion. The hardware, rubber guard, triangular side pieces, smaller triangular pieces, base covers, three roller mill assembly, and the two rectangular side pieces. Start by attaching the side pieces to the base cover. This is a good start because if you don't do this first, it's hard to tighten the middle screw once the other sides are attached. Do both of these and then make sure you go back and tighten up all the screws that you just put together by hand. Now we're going to be attaching the smaller triangular pieces to the larger triangular pieces. From here, you will attach the triangular assemblies to the side pieces and base mount. Like I mentioned earlier, it's easier for the side pieces and the base mount to go on the outside so that the channels are on the inside. Next, we're going to throw the rubber guard on the top to minimize the chance of shredding your arms. After that, just use the 10mm wrench and attach the whole assembly to the three roller grain mill itself. One thing you'll notice is that the grain mill didn't come with a base, so I guess it's time to build a base. Super easy! To build a base, you need a board. First, you're going to measure that board, then you're going to cut that board, then you're going to cut another piece of the board, then you're going to plane the heck out of that board. It takes a few runs of the board if you're using a warped ass chainsaw plane. Ooh, pretty. Then after that, we're going to plane the edges off so you can glue them together. Immediately realize it's much easier to use a table saw. Then we're going to glue them together. They fit. Clamp that together. Whoop, bendy. Get some weights. Weigh it down. And then play the weight game. Couple last kills. By now the glue should have dried, so back to building. Trace the mill. Drill some holes. Get in there with the jigsaw to cut that square. And drill some final holes so you can screw on the mill. Check the holes and make sure they fit the screw. Sand that down so it looks all pretty. And then finally attach the mill to the base. As you may have noticed, the mill didn't come with any screws to attach it to the base. I found some kicking around the garage from an old TV mount kit. 
They were M6 by 35 millimeters and had washers as well. Finally set that mill over the bucket just to see how it fits. Perfect. Grab your drill to make sure it fits on the grain mill. It probably does, it's built for that. But let's check it out anyway. Here it goes. Yep, it does. Pause for a glamour shot. Then let's check the handle just in case we want to do it the hard way. Looks like it fits, I'm pretty excited. It's looking good, oh yeah, let's try it. So you might want to make your base a little thinner if you ever plan on using the handle. Ooh, happy juice. Yum. That's good. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. And now back to the mill. Here's how the rollers move when you're adjusting them with the side knobs. And now for setting up the crush. I took a quick step back and took the cover off it just to make sure the spacing was right and the knobs kind of matched up. I used a credit card to get that spacing perfectly. It's not actually a credit card, so don't try to steal the number, which I'm pretty sure you can do. Feel free to use my ultra mark points, so. though. And here's my first crush with the 0.032 setting. As you can see from this crush, the 0.032 setting is quite fine. There was a lot of flour produced and the husk were broken into many pieces. This would probably make for a stuck mash for Bruna basket applications, but maybe good for Bruna bag applications. It would work there because you're not quite worried about a stuck mash and you can just stir during the whole process. Here we go with round two, halfway between the 0.032 setting and the 0.064 setting. You'll notice with this one that the husks are much more intact. The amount of flour is significantly reduced and the grain is nicely crushed. This will allow for a much better circulation through the mash and much less chance of a stuck mash or useless sparge. With this crush, the flour mostly filtered to the bottom, which will get picked up in the initial circulation of your system, but once it's hydrated, it should settle nicely throughout your grain bed. And finally we tried the last setting which is 0.064 or the top dead center setting. This setting left the husks almost fully intact. I didn't notice any pieces of grain left in the hulls and the flour was not surprisingly reduced once again. This crush would probably work fine within your system but I believe it is just a little bit coarse which would lead to a little bit less efficiency. Let's take a look at all three together. For myself I like using the middle setting for crushing my grain. I don't get too many stuck sparges and the recirculation works well without losing too much efficiency. I would recommend this setting for your grandfather, Brusilla, Foundry, or any other of those all-in-one systems. If you're a brew and a bag user, I would probably go with a finer setting and just stir a bit more frequently. You may even want to set it at a finer number, but just make sure the rollers aren't hitting each other or you could cause some damage. I'm not sure I would use the highest setting for anything unless maybe I was doing an extended mash for some reason. So overall, I'd choose the middle setting, but let me know what you use in the comments below. Well, there you have it, the Malt Muncher 3. I'm very happy with the uh, purchase there. Kegland did another all right product. Um, still National IPA Day, so I might as well finish this beer that I started in the intro. <sighs> Tasty. See you later. And now ready for another tip of the week. When you make a video with a lot of malt kicking around, make sure you don't leave dump trucks and excavators around for your kids to play with. They will make a mess. I guarantee you.